Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, what have I got for you lot today? Well, I've had an awful lot of requests for some more line and wash and also some requests for a castle. So I thought we could combine the two together and we'll have a go at this lovely Scottish castle in line and wash. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. Okay, so here's the reference photo. It's the stunning Aileen Donan Castle. And here's another version of it that I painted several years ago. Just such a beautiful place. So for today, we've got another short paint review, and this is the student grade set by Royal Talons, the Van Gogh or Van Gogh pocket box watercolors. So there's no swatch card, but you can peel off the info label then I'm going to stick it back on the lid for reference. So here we are, I've made my own swatch card and then I'm going to put it back in the box. Now I must point out that I'm not sponsored in any way. I paid for these myself. In fact, I won't use this channel to promote any particular brands. Because my integrity as an artist is far more important to me than shamelessly promoting products purely for profit. Shall we get going? So for today's materials, I have some Windsor Newton professional paper, 300 pound rough, but any decent watercolor paper will do. And I'm just gonna be using five colors from the Van Gogh set. Yellow ochre, Payne's gray, burnt sienna, sap green, and ultramarine deep. Just three brushes today, a number six, a number 12 round, and a mop. What, no rigor? Nope, not today. Okay, so now for the drawing. I'm going for a long, narrow shape today. Now, a few have asked me about how I start my paintings and how to avoid that fear of the blank page. Now, it's all about drawing with confidence and I've got a sketching video coming soon which will help to explain all of this. But as always, for today, a drawing template is free to download from my website, link in the description below. Now when I do all my line and washes, I like to have the pencil put down first. Now the hard work is done, you can relax and get a nice fluid line going with your pen. As you can see, I'm changing the angle of my wrist as I draw the verticals and horizontals, just to make the process easier. Just make sure you use a waterproof pen. Just check it first before starting. I did a glorious drawing once of the Brighton Pavilion many years ago, only for it to wash away when I started painting. As I often say about most of my work, try not to be too precise and neat with each line. It's the wobbly bits that gives it its character. Now I've sped up this section quite a bit as it would get a bit monotonous watching every line.
Now let the ink dry for a few moments, then rub out the pencil work. And a good soft putty rubber is ideal as you won't damage any of the paper. Okay, so I'm starting with a mop and wetting the complete sky area with clean water. Next with my number 12 round, I'm dropping in wet in wet some Payne's Grey. Now this is a mix of Ultramarine and Payne's Grey. And now to add in a touch of warmth, this is some yellow ochre. So while I'm waiting for the sky to dry, I'm taking a small piece of wax. You can use a little piece of candle. This is a piece of tea light. And I'm lightly rubbing over a few small areas in the rocks to act as a resist. And you can leave the wax on afterwards. In with some Payne's Grey again. And I'm using exactly the same colours as I did in the sky above, but with darker values towards the bottom of the rocks. And this is done all wet in wet. And here you can see that lovely texture created by the wax. Next, just sprinkle a little bit of table salt to get some lovely rocky textures. Next, with some watery ultramarine for these hills. Now blue always helps to give that sense of distance. Next for the green, and this is a 50-50 mix of sap green and yellow ochre. Dropping in here, wet in wet, a touch of burnt sienna just along the bottom. This little bit here, I'm just adding a touch of yellow ochre. And here, just adding a touch more sap green. And this is Burnt Sienna again. Oh 
Okay, so now we need to let this totally dry. So it's a perfect time for a short break and a wee dram of the famous grouse malt whiskey. Next, with a second wash or glaze of ultramarine, I'm bringing this headland a little nearer. The next is a sap green and ultramarine mix to give little shadows and darker values to the trees and grass. Next for the castle, and I'm painting in some clean water just to make sure you can keep that paint moving. Then dropping in some yellow ochre, touches of burnt sienna, and then some Payne's grey. And again, all done wet and wet, so you do have to work quickly here. darker value of Payne's grain here just to get a nice strong contrast with the rocks. And here is a watery mix of burnt sienna and Payne's grey. I'm lifting out a little wall texture with a scrunched up piece of tissue. And this is just a touch of Payne's Grey. Now a mix of yellow ochre and burnt sienna for the roof. This is the mix of Payne's Grey and Ultramarine again, but nice and watery with quick horizontal strokes and make sure you leave a few sparkling white bands. Now while still wet, the reflection with matching colors to above.
just some Payne's Grey for this little area. Now a few quick ripples with the blue-grey mix. So now I'm beginning to start with some smaller details using Payne's Grey and my number six brush. Be nice and confident and keep that brush flowing as always with quick natural movement. Try and do it with one stroke without fussing and fiddling. Kitchen roll is out, you know what that means. Splatting in some lovely random texture into the rocks. And if it goes into the grass, so what? This here, a little beige pastel pencil, just to give a few lighter stones in the wall. course the magic scalpel for a few little sparkles of water. And we're done. All we have left to do is sign it and here's the perfect spot. So what did I think about the Van Gogh paints? To be honest, I'm not sure you would call them student quality. The price suggests that they are, because this set was only 18 UK pounds, but the quality was excellent. Vibrant, easy to mix, good granulation on some of the colors. All in all, I'd have to give them a good nine out of 10. If you're fairly new to watercolor, you won't go wrong with this set. I'll put them on a par with the Cotman range, which I've always considered to be the best in student quality. The color choice is also spot on. If I could only use these 12 colors for the rest of my life, I'd be happy. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Just one thing before we leave, a few of you have said that you find the pace of the video sometimes goes a little bit too fast for you. So what you can do is slow the video down. If you have a look just below the video here, there's a little cog icon and you can click on that and set the speed to whatever you like. It will make me sound a bit like a drunken idiot, but then what's different anyway. So anyway, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, Leave a comment and I look forward to seeing you all again next week for Watercolour Wednesday.
So, take care. Cheers. Cheers.